So, do product managers need technical background? I'm a product manager. This background doesn't look at all technical. Hi, I'm Dr. Bart, and today I'll be discussing if product managers need technical background. And not this technical background, obviously. It's a great question to ask, and I'll be replying as a person who has a degree in automation, who did start his career as an IT technician, and as a senior product manager, I will firmly say No, no you don't need technical background as a product manager. Product managers need to look for value in the product and then execute the best possible choices in order to progress the business. Let me recall the definition from the Great Product Manager course. A product manager leads a product that solves a problem using a team of talented individuals and technology in order to deliver value. We are using the technology we are not the ones that need to understand it and utilize it. That's more of a project manager um, territory or a team lead where the technical details need to be well presented to the team and well chosen in order to progress the actual item that you're working in your roadmap. However, that doesn't mean that the product manager can just throw away his computer and be totally um, amish. No, no, no. There are pieces of technology and technical aspects that will greatly help you in your career, regardless of your background, whether it's sales, whether it's QA, um, client support, anything other than well, developing. So, what should you focus on? What should you develop in order to be friendly with the technology that will help you in your career? So, first of all, data analysis tools. It would be great if you could get some experience using programs like Power BI or Adobe Analytics. Truth be told, if you are a proficient Excel user that can manipulate data any way he or she wants, that can pivot all the tables, I'm not sure if I used this correctly in a sentence, that can plot any charts needed and take any data set and transform it in a way that the stakeholders understand the numbers, then you are great to go. That's exactly what the product managers need to know. Using Power BI or Adobe Analytics or similar tools just makes it easier or quicker, but not really more um, precise. Those tools come with some disadvantages or a delay. There is a step further you can take to learn a coding language called Python which is very good at um, data analysis, but that's more of a data scientist, data analyst field, which is a step too far when talking about a universally useful knowledge that will help you. I mean, obviously, uh, you can start, start by saying that, yes, you can have technical background that will help you, and you can know Python, but that's like taking three extra miles, really you will probably have people that will do that for you and as long as you are a proficient Excel user you really have an advantage. And when it comes to product management it's very good to know and be a proficient user of the programs that are specifically designed to help you manage your product. And I'm talking here about Jira, I'm talking here about Trello, Monday.com, and many other suits that will make it easier for you to manage your backlog. And 
will start working more effectively when you land your product management position. Rather than land a program and take more time to kick off your full-time duties when onboarded, you can just jump onto it like jumping to the lake without learning to swim. You would be already a proficient swimmer. And don't worry if the new job comes with a different tool, as long as you have some kind of fluency, at least one of them, it will be most likely easy to adapt to the new one. Next thing to improve your day-to-day -day life as a product manager is understanding the language behind version control software. Those are used by the developers to make sure that things don't go south too much. In essence, things like GitHub allows you to keep different versions of your product, the code base, in parallel. This way, whenever an update happens, you are able to go back to a previous version if the new one failed, and also it prevents conflicts between different developers uploading the additions to the software and it highlights any conflicts in code. So if some block says yes and the other says no, then those two developers have, have to talk to one another and decide how to change that particular code uh, in order to make it work for both of them without damaging any other part of the code base. It might be slightly complicated, but as long as you understand how it works and know the vocabulary, it will be easier to understand what's going on and why there are certain delays with the release or this kind of stuff. This will also be very helpful when talking to stakeholders. If you understand what's going on, you can explain it in a way they will understand it and thus make your life easier and then perhaps less frustrated. Now, I did mention Python and learning this coding language to help you understand what's going on around the development process. And indeed, you can learn any coding language and its principles up to a really, really basic level, so it would be easier to talk to your devs, but you can skip that altogether and instead invest an hour or two with your team and ask them how exactly their process works. How do they, where do, what do they use to code? How do they ensure there are no mistakes? How do they, they prevent bugs? How do they later fix them? And what are the steps they need to take in order to change the code they've written into, the product, into a part of the product that the users will use? If you understand this process, it will make it way more easier to talk to your devs and be on the same page when a technical detail will prevent uh, going forward for any reason. I mean, it's not that when you understand you can always pat them on the back and accept the harsh re reality, but it will be easier to challenge them when needed and understand when things really went south and there's no point making additional noise because there's nothing they can do. It would be also beneficial if you knew what automated and unit testing is and why it's worth to delay the release or code a bit longer and include that into the scope of the task. Obviously, this is some part that you can strip to quicken the release but it's really beneficial, really, in terms of the security of the whole product. And understanding that will help you talk more openly with the developers. In 2021, it will also be great if you, catch, if you can catch up on the knowledge on what this cloud is, how does it work, and how, uh, how beneficial it is for you as a product manager to work on it and very similarly understand what APIs, application programmable interfaces are, what are the best practices, when and why are they used 
and if you should consider them in your product. Read up on different types of APIs, on how, to, how they interact with each other, and what are the different use cases for different types of those APIs. Finally, it would be good if you understand your product. What is its code structure, how um, old it is in terms of the code, what could be improved, what are the basic principles, and what are the basic issues that the developers have to face long term, the, the technical debt. But that's really not needed, it's just taking the extra mile to well, make it easier for uh, all of you and showing to your team that you care. And you showing that makes, it, makes you an empathic leader and not just a business guy that tells them what to do. That's not what you want. So this longer video, this list, tells you on what technical things to uh, invest your time into to be a better product manager if you don't have the technical background. But as you can see, there is no need to take a long course on technical details of development. There's no need to be an engineer. And what you actually need to do is be yourself, be a product manager, be sure to ask questions, be curious, investigate, research, and find all the knowledge that you need in order to be a better product manager. And this will also help you, all what I listed, in any um, job interview, because those are the technical details that most of the product managers will have to face. And if you are familiar with them, you are more likely to win your dream job. Thank you for listening to me and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. I really hope you liked it. And if you want to see more, be sure to like and subscribe those buttons below. But apart from that, I'm also running a product management course on Udemy, which is crafted for aspiring and young product managers, as well as the more senior ones that are looking for more of an inspiration and where to grow their skills when they feel lost. So, if you want to check it out, there's a link in the description and hit me up if you want a discount coupon. I'm really happy to share it. Thank you. See you in the next video.